my fellow model railroaders out there. This here is Bobby coming to you guys once again with another brand new episode of Model Train Tech. Now, if it isn't quite obvious what we're looking at here for today's review, well, then I suggest you guys pay attention because this is going to turn out to be a good one because the model we have to review today is not only the most exclusive model that I have ever owned in any scale of model railroading that I've ever been involved in, but to me, this is my personal favorite model of all of the modern day stuff that I currently have in my uh, roster or on my roster, however you want to say it. And well, it is quite obvious what it is. It is the Amtrak Veterans Locomotive. Only 800 examples of this particular engine were made in HO scale via custom commission uh, by Amtrak through Athern Model Railroad Company. So yes, this is an ordinary Athern P42DC that is DCC ready as well, which I've already fitted DCC to. But of course, as you can see, it has been custom painted in the Salute Our Veterans scheme that is the first of three locomotives now running on any of Amtrak's services that are now painted in the Veterans paint scheme because you have this, which was the first, then you have the retired F40PH that Amtrak uh, then painted into this as sort of a uh, rear end motor, kind of a pusher unit, if you will. I don't remember the exact technical term for it. And then you have one of Amtrak's new electric ACS 64 locomotives that they had painted up in the same Veterans scheme. So what we're gonna do with this model today is since I've had it for a while, not only are we going to go over the details and everything like that, but we are also going to be taking a look at what makes this particular model special and also uh, what I like about the model and there also unfortunately are a couple things that I don't like about it. So I guess as they say, without any further ado, let's go ahead and open the box and get this model out in the open. All right, so first things first, looking at the packaging, even though this is an Athern ready to run P42 DC, where you would normally expect a bright yellow and blue box uh, designating this as an Athern locomotive, as you can see, the packaging is very unique and very special for the Veterans locomotive itself. Now, Amtrak did do uh, some silver boxes on some of their other limited edition models, including some of the other heritage units uh, that they released uh, in the order in which they were painted but as you can see for this one not only does it say things like limited collector's edition and also the uh, sticker telling you which of the 800 units you ended up with as you can see I ended up with one of the last hundred uh, of these and I feel uh, for starters before I go into anything else I feel Amtrak kind of just handed you one at random because uh, a couple other members of Northwest Crossing Operating Model Railroad Club that also have uh, this particular unit as well in HO scale got a number uh, that was earlier than this one but they got theirs later than mine so that is a little weird I don't know if their orders were shipped out and it took longer or if Amtrak just picked one out at random but as you can see on the box I am number 763 of 800 models so quite honored to at least get one of these um, and also before I go into the packaging this model was not cheap, whereas the normal models from Athern, uh, at least locomotives that are ready to run and or DCC ready, uh, probably anywhere between, I'd say, $79 or maybe even $69, all the way up to maybe about $110 to $120. This was about $150, and you could not order this from Athern's website. You had to go straight to Amtrak's website, go to their store, and then order it through there. So this was an uh, offered exclusive exclusively through Amtrak, hence why they have their name on the box and Athern kind of took a sidestep with just the little logo right here. But as we turn the box to the side, you can read even through a little fade, it is the Amtrak P42DC number 42, obviously, and there is the Salutes Our Veterans uh, paint scheme. Now, before we also go into anything else, there is a little statement here on the side, and I'll kind of give you the uh, gist of it. Uh, Amtrak says that they are committed to their veterans, but they have a goal of at least 25% of their new hires being veterans. And therefore, uh, they wanted at least... Um, 
as sort of a step towards that goal and to show their appreciation for America's veterans worldwide, whether serving in war, uh, whether they've uh, retired, or whether they're future veterans, uh, whatever the case may be, Amtrak wanted to make sure that they are recognized. And they are not the first railroad to do something like this. Um, as many may know, uh, Norfolk Southern did the uh, Salutes Our Veterans locomotive uh, for freight service, but this one, as you can guess, is meant for passengers. But anyways, looking around the rest of the box, as you can see, there's also the Atherin logo on that side, the statement over here, all of the disclaimers telling you what age recommendation this is, and also uh, the choking hazards and whatnot. And then, of course, as you can see all the way around, the red, white, and blue stripes, and of course, the little white stars. Now, taking the lid off, it is just a standard Atherin lid with a little window in the front. Uh, but then you get what my friend Inner City 82 or my uh, longtime subscription to 80, uh, Inner City 82 has taught me uh, is referred to as a block of ice because he says that these models literally look they're, like they're frozen. And as you can see, indeed they do. So, uh, typical Athern packaging or at least typical modern Athern packaging, you have a sleeve here. So it just simply slides straight off and we'll set that to one side. And then to actually get access to the locomotive, all you have to do is simply pull the little tab off in the back without putting too much pressure on it or ripping the plastic. But anyways, just pull it open like that. There's a nice little bit of cling film up here to protect the top of the locomotive. I'll just grab it gently, pull it on out, set her down. And now it's time to take a look at this beautiful Amtrak P42DC in a little more detail. Alrighty, so here we are starting off at the front of this beautiful P42, and the first thing I have to say overall about this locomotive is the paintwork is very crisp, very clean, not really any blurs between the four different colors, the beautiful blue, the white, the red, and then this little black patch up here on the top of the cab and around the windows and whatnot. But also, Atherin seems to be very, very keen on the details. This goes for pretty much any Atherin locomotive with the exception of only a couple that I've owned over the years where the details are just down to the T. They, they really go out of their way to make sure the details are right. I mean, everything down from this little area where it says Beach Grove, uh, referring to the Beach Grove Amtrak shops in Indiana where most of the Genesis locomotives uh, were built and or maintained, um, to all of the stars around the bottom. I've looked all the way around. There's 50 stars in total, obviously, America. Um, but uh, the stars are all very crisp and clean quality, no smudges, no bad marks. So I, I either got a very good model, because I don't know if all of them turned out the same, but I can tell you on this particular one, there is just absolutely no blemishes in the paintwork whatsoever. Everything also down to the numbers, so the 42 on the side, the American flag, of course, um, but also just, again, the quality... Um, of the detail and also this thing does have the warm amber lights here it has the two up here in the middle of the nose and you also have the two down here uh, it does not have the red uh, marker lights you would have to install those uh, separately uh, it would be kind of cool to see those but then again this this does seem like more of a budget uh, P42 uh, for at least Atherin specs because down here we've got the plastic little uh, McHenry knuckle coupler they always seem to break they don't really work that well but uh, I'll be replacing that very soon with a Katie coupler down here the plow just exactly the same but no MU cables or anything like that but they do have the plugs for those way the heck up here on the nose um, so that's just equally as nice. Same thing with the Amtrak logo, the windshield wipers uh, do look separately applied, so that is nice that they at least gave it that, no molded in windshield wipers or anything. It doesn't look cheap. It certainly does not look like a cheap model, so Atherin really did go to extra lengths to make sure this thing looks as good as possible. Now looking at the engine from the side, you can definitely tell for starters that this is a true car body locomotive because there's no separation between a cab and what would be the hood uh, of the locomotive. Instead, it's just one big long cowl. Uh, but focusing again on the paintwork here, all of the little details, all of the little rivets, absolutely perfect down to scale size. Um, you've got all of the radiator grills and everything and whatnot up top. Uh, it does have the little door at the rear of the locomotive. This does not open 
open or anything like that, but it does look like a separately applied piece even though it is molded into the body. Same with these grills down here, very nicely done. And the, of course, the centerpiece of all of this is the Salutes Our Veterans uh, logo or America's Railroad Salutes Our Veterans. Pardon me, you gotta say it correctly. Um, but this, on the, looking at the side, this is where I have my first complaint. Um, these models have very fragile side steps. Down here by the trucks, there are actually side steps that hang off of the front and hang off of the rear. And as you can see on my model, they are no longer there. They are instead in the box because unfortunately when I took this model out and I actually took it apart um, I did not intend to I was not intending to break the model or anything but the clips that actually secure the shell to the chassis are down here on uh, right above each of the trucks at least here in the front they're right here by the cab door same thing here by the rear cab door so that is a bit of a pain that they decided to all uh, break off. I do have one remaining on the right rear corner of the engine, but all the other three have actually come off. So that is uh, definitely something that, that Ather needs to look into. Maybe some metal steps to prevent them from coming off. I mean, just little plasticky stuff like that. It, it kind of starts to show cheapness. I mean, this is a $150 model. I would have expected just a tiny bit more. Um, but overall, from the side, um, again, can't can't fault the crispness of the paintwork, the badging, the detail, all that stuff. Everything still looks exactly the same. And I'll, and I'll bet you any money, if you took a magnifying glass, you could also probably see a few of the warnings and stuff down here on the other side, uh, uh, down here by the rear truck as well. And at the back of the engine, of course, we got more details here at the back. No MU cables or anything like that. And again, another plastic McHenry knuckle coupler. But we do have the warm LED lights, or the uh, warm uh, amber lights here in the back uh, for the reversing lights. No red marker lights. Those are just simply painted on. Um, but apart from that, I mean, all of the model seems to be in very good shape. There is a little smudge, what looks like just... Uh, like adhesive or something out of the box on the back of my engine here. But other than that, it's been absolutely perfectly fine. Um, again, the paint quality is second to none. You've got the American flag on the back. And overall, it's just another quality example of how Athern does pay attention to detail when it comes to constructing their models. They may not always use the most premium of... Um, of uh, building materials, but then you cannot fault them for some things like uh, the detailing that they put into some of these engines. So coming around to the front here, up under the cab for a second, I did also want to show you the trucks, or the bogies as some people call them, here on this locomotive. This is a four axle diesel, so again, two wheels on each side of the truck. Um, and as far as just the construction is concerned, they do very much look like just one molded piece uh, with a lot more depth and uh, sort of a relief to a lot of the pieces to make them look a little more realistic. Uh, you of course have the encased wheel bearings here, uh, again very much like the prototype. Uh, I don't see a whole lot of separately applied details, but as far as just detail orientation is concerned, the trucks still do hold up uh, to Athern's level of getting the details right. And certainly last but not least, coming up on top of the what would be considered the hood part here of this locomotive, we of course have things like the standard all forward facing uh, Nathan K5 LA five chime air horn. We have the exhaust stack back here. And if this locomotive were weathered more like the prototypical thing, I'm sure a lot more of the details would show up rather than just being in bright silver right here. Uh, but you also do have a metal grate for the uh, huge fan here at the back of this uh, locomotive. You also have different things such as the riveting up top. It's all one big molded piece except for the metal grate and the separately applied exhaust stack and air horn. Uh, because, I mean, being a car body, I'm not expecting too much. If this were a uh, typical locomotive, uh, like a traditional GE locomotive with the big wing on the back and the, and the uh, wide cab up at the front, but the skinny hood in the middle, I'm sure there would be a lot more detail to point out uh, on the sides and up top. But being that this is a car body, um, you just see things, again, like the rivets, the horn, and all that stuff, uh, all as one with only a couple of uh, separately applied details as well. So that pretty much wraps it up for looking at the engine itself. So now let's take a look at this thing in action.
Alrighty guys, so there you have it, the Amtrak Veterans Locomotive in HO scale as done by Athern. Now if you want to get your hands on one of these, I suggest you look very hard because as far as I'm aware, Athern does not sell this uh, on their website, well I know they don't sell it on their website, but as far as I'm concerned uh, or aware, Amtrak does not have any more of the 800 of these HO scale models uh, available. They do probably still have some in N scale, which those were made by Kato, uh, so if you're an N scale modeler, uh, then I suggest you look at Amtrak's website and see if they even have one of these at all. If not, I would suggest uh, for either HO or N scale, I would take a look at eBay and see if you can find one that way. Now, I didn't want to end this review on a low, but I did want to mention one quick thing about this engine's performance. During those running clips that you just saw, this engine was running at almost full tilt on a Digitrax DT402 wireless throttle. Now I had the engine speed cranked up to about 75 to 80, which the speed steps go all the way up to 99, and even if I were to tr uh, crank it up from 80 to 99, it really doesn't feel like it changes speed all that much. And quite honestly, even with a rake of only five Superliner cars, as you saw uh, in those running clips, unfortunately it just doesn't seem like it's running as fast as the prototype would normally look in this scale. But I'm not necessarily complaining, the engine runs very smooth, it's a very good performer, and I do ha uh, want to use this engine in the future when I run my full length model of the Amtrak Sunset Limited as you see it today. All I need is another P42, the baggage car, and two sleeper cars to complete the train that I normally see running here through Houston and coming from either Los Angeles or New Orleans where it currently goes to and from uh, to this day. Now, like I said, this engine was not cheap. When I bought it, it was $150. So if you go looking for one of these, you may expect to pay a little bit more of a premium for one if someone uh, has one brand new in box, kind of new old stock, as they say, um, and then you're really going to be paying for it. But otherwise, I wish you guys luck in finding one, and thank you guys so much for watching this review of the, Amtrak's veteran lo uh, the Amtrak Veterans Locomotive here in HO scale. Um, if you guys like what you see, feel free to like, uh, like, subscribe, and or leave a comment, whatever you so desire. But again, guys, from here in Houston, Texas, and for Rails of Houston, this is Bobby Johnson, signing out.